Yellowstone National Park, Part 2, Native and Invasive Species of the Park. Yellowstone National Park, the most visited national park in America, is famous for its abundance of volcanic features. However, those volcanic features are not the only things that astound millions of visitors every year. The park is home to hundreds of plant and animal species, most of them native species, some of those native species also being endemic. However, there are some invasive species as well. There are also very few species that are extinct. Since the Greater Yellowstone area is such a well-preserved ecosystem, most species that were there before humans arrived are still there. As discussed in the previous episode of this mini-series about Yellowstone National Park, there are eight ecosystems in the park. Those ecosystems are home to all of the park's living species, which number well over 2,000. The Wet Dense Forest Ecosystem is the ecosystem that is home to the most plants and animals of the park. The other ecosystems of the park are home to about as many species of plants and animals combined as the wet dense forest ecosystem is by itself. The animals in the park are grouped by types. The most predominant types are birds, mammals, fish, insects, and reptiles and amphibians. There are other groups such as mollusks and invertebrates, but those groups make up less than 5% of all animal species found in the park. The birds group is by far the most abundant group in the park, with around 318 known members and a possible 10 more. This group of animals can be found all over the park, especially nesting in forest ecosystems. These animals feed on other animals or small seeds found in grasslands. The mammals group is the second biggest animal group in the park, with an estimated 60 members and a possible 2 more. This group can be found all over the park, especially in forest ecosystems. However, small mammals of Yellowstone like to settle in meadows or grasslands. These animals feed on a variety of both plants and animals. The fish group is the third biggest animal group in the park, with an estimated 13 members. This group can only be found in water ecosystems, but the water ecosystems can be found almost anywhere throughout the park. These animals feed on algae in the water and occasionally insects that stray into the water. The insects group and the reptile amphibian group are tied for the fourth most abundant animal groups in the park, with a combined 20 members, 10 in each group. These animals can be found all over the park, especially near sources of water, and feed on both kingdoms. One more very interesting ecosystem makes its mark in Yellowstone National Park, the geyser ecosystem. These ecosystems are centered around water runoff from geysers, hot springs, and mud pots. They are home to thermophiles, special bacteria that have adapted to living in extremely hot conditions, sometimes in water that is tens of degrees below boiling. The type of thermophile that lives in the bacterial mats in the water is determined by the temperature of the water that they live in and what they feed on. The hotter the water, the more colorful the bacteria. Bacteria in water that is 50 to 60 degrees Celsius tend to be a bright orange color, while bacteria in cooler water are a dark green color. Bacteria also tend to take to the tendencies of plants or animals. Two new differences arise in the bacteria of the ecosystem. One type of bacteria, cyanobacteria, feed on sunlight, while the other type of bacteria, filamentous bacteria, feed on hydrogen sulfide. The filamentous bacteria also contribute to shaping geyser basins, as they convert the hydrogen sulfide to sulfuric acid, which breaks down some of the surrounding clay and mud. Together, the park is home to around 2,111 native species of plants and animals. This pristine ecosystem has been around for thousands of years and has barely lost any species of either plants or animals over the years. Some species in Yellowstone have had offspring that are not quite like their parents, and due to the moderate isolation created by the mountains surrounding the area, those species were unable to move to other places. Species that exist only in certain small areas of the world are called endemic to that particular area, and Yellowstone has several. One example is the Yellowstone sand verbena, a species of flowering plant that is native only to the lake shores of Yellowstone. Some endemic species are currently being threatened by invasive species. Around 170 of the 1,870 species of plants that live in the park are invasive, and 30 of the 441 species of animals that live in the park are invasive. Invasive plants do not cause as much damage to the park as in some other parks, but they still pose a significant threat to the flora and fauna of the park, and eventually the greater Yellowstone area as well. Some invasive plants that are found in Yellowstone are also found in nearby national parks, including Glacier National Park. 
Invasive species were brought over to the park partly by Native Americans at the time of their settlement, but mostly by European and American explorers on their frequent expeditions to the west. Nowadays, several programs are working to restore the park to its original balance of life, and most of these programs are successful. Thank you for watching this documentary, and as always, if you enjoyed it, like the video, favorite it, or share it with your friends. And if you want to see the third part of this mini-series, I recommend subscribing.